Hi there, you are a feminist, but do you know your classics and the basis of feminist writings? Sit tight and prepare your pencil for reference. Number 1. Bad Feminist. By Roxane Gay. Bad Feminist, Essays is a 2014 collection of essays by cultural critic, novelist and professor Roxane Gay. Bad Feminist explores being a feminist while loving things that could seem at odds with feminist ideology. Number 2. We Should All Be Feminists. By Kim Amanda Ngozi Adichie. We Should All Be Feminists is a book-length essay by the Nigerian author Kim Amanda Ngozi Adichie. First published in 2014 by Fourth Estate, it talks about the definition of feminism for the 21st century. Number 3. The Second Sex. By Simon E. de Beauvoir. The Second Sex is a 1949 book by the French existentialist Simon E. de Beauvoir, in which the author discusses the treatment of women throughout history. Beauvoir researched and wrote the book in about 14 months between 1946 and 1949. She published it in two volumes, Facts and Myths and Lived Experience. Number 4. The Handmaid's Tale. By Margaret Atwood. The Handmaid's Tale is a dystopian novel by Canadian author Margaret Atwood, published in 1985. It is set in a near future New England, in a strongly patriarchal, quasi-Christian, totalitarian state, known as Jalid that has overthrown the United States government. Number 5. Men Explain Things to Me. By Rebecca Sinit. Men Explain Things to Me is a 2014 essay collection by the American writer Rebecca Sinit, published by Haymarket Books. The book originally contained seven essays, and according to its publisher, has become a touchstone of the feminist movement. Number 6. Sister Outsider. By Audre Lorde. Sister Outsider, Essays and Speeches is a collection of essential essays and speeches written by Audrey Lord, a woman who wrote from the particulars of her identity. Black woman, lesbian, poet, activist, cancer survivor, mother, and feminist writer. Number 7. The Feminine Mystique. By Betty Friedan. The Feminine Mystique is a book by Betty Friedan that is widely credited with sparking the beginning of second wave feminism in the United States. It was published on February the 19th, 1963 by W.W. W. Norton. Number 8. A Room of One's Own. By Virginia Woolf. A Room of One's Own is an extended essay by Virginia Woolf, first published in September 1929. The work is based on two lectures Woolf delivered in October 1928 at Newnham College and Girton College, women's constituent colleges at the University of Cambridge. Number 9. Feminism is for Everybody. By Bell Hooks. What is feminism? In this short, accessible primer, Bell Hooks explores the nature of feminism and its positive promise to eliminate sexism, sexist exploitation, and oppression. Number 10. The Beauty Myth. By Naomi Wolf. The Beauty Myth, How Images of Beauty Are Used Against Women is a non-fiction book by Naomi Wolf, originally published in 1990 by Chateau and Windows in the UK and William Morrow and Co. in the United States. It was republished in 2002 by Harper Perennial with a new introduction. Number 11. A Vindication of the Rights of Woman, with Strictures on Political and Moral Subjects. By Mary Wollstonecraft. A Vindication of the Rights of Woman, with Strictures on Political and Moral Subjects, written by the 18th century British proto-feminist Mary Wollstonecraft, is one of the earliest works of feminist philosophy. Number 12. The Bell Jar. By Sylvia Plath. The Bell Jar is the only novel written by the American writer and poet Sylvia Plath. Originally published under the pseudonym Victoria Lucas in 1963, the novel is semi-autobiographical, with the names of places and people changed. Number 13. This Bridge Called My Back. By Rosario Morales. This Bridge Called My Back, Writings by Radical Women of Color is a feminist anthology edited by Cherry Morrow and Gloria Yanzel Dew. First published in 1981 by Persepone Press. The second edition was published in 1983 by Kitchen Table, Women of Color Press. Number 14. The Female Eunuch. By Germaine Greer. The Female Eunuch is a 1970 book by Germaine Greer that became an international bestseller and an important text in the feminist movement. Greer's thesis is that the traditional, suburban, consumerist, nuclear family represses women sexually, and that this devitalizes them, rendering them eunuchs. Number 15. The Color Purple. By Alice Walker. 
The Color Purple is a 1982 epistolary novel by American author Alice Walker, which won the 1983 Pulitzer Prize for Fiction and the National Book Award for Fiction. It was later adapted into a film and musical of the same name. Number 16. The Awakening. By Kate Chopin. The Awakening is a novel by Kate Chopin, first published in 1899, set in New Orleans and on the Louisiana Gulf Coast at the end of the 19th century. The plot centers on Edna Pontellier and her struggle between her increasingly unorthodox views on femininity and motherhood with the prevailing social attitudes at the turn of the century. American South. Number 17. The Yellow Wallpaper. By Charlotte Perkins Gilman. The Yellow Wallpaper is a short story by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, published 1892 in the New England Magazine. It is regarded as an important early work of American feminist literature for its illustration of the attitudes towards mental and physical health of women in the 19th century. Number 18. Gender Trouble. By Judith Butler. Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity is a book by the philosopher Judith Butler, in which the author argues that gender is a kind of improvised performance. Number 19. How to Be a Woman. By Caitlin Moran. How to Be a Woman is a 2011 non-fiction memoir by British writer Caitlin Moran. The book documents Moran's early life including her views on feminism. As of July 2014, it had sold over a million copies. Number 20. The Vagina Monologues. By Eve Ensler. The Vagina Monologues is an episodic play written by Eve Ensler which developed and premiered at Hira Center, off-off-Broadway in New York and was followed by an off-Broadway run in 1996 at West Side Theatre. Number 21. Ain't I a Woman? By Bell Hooks. Ain't I a Woman? Black Women and Feminism is a 1981 book by Bell Hooks titled after Sojourner Truth's Ain't I a Woman? speech. Hooks examines the effect of racism and sexism on black women, the civil rights movement, and feminist movements from suffrage to the 1970s. Number 22. Shrill, Notes from a Loud Woman By Lindy West Shrill, Notes from a Loud Woman is a 2016 non-fiction book by American writer Lindy West. Number 23. I am Malala, the girl who stood up for education and was shot by the Taliban. By Christina Lam and Malalia Safe as I. I am Malala, the story of the girl who stood up for education and was shot by the Taliban is an autobiographical book by Malalia Safe as I, co-written with Christina Lam. It was published on the 8th of October 2013, by Weidenfeld and Nicholson in the UK and Little, Brown and Company in the US. Number 24. Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women that a Movement Forgot. By Micka Kendall. All too often the focus of mainstream feminism is not on basic survival for the many, but on increasing privilege for the few. Meeting basic needs is a feminist issue. Food insecurity, the living wage and access to education are feminist issues. Number 25. Feminists don't wear pink and other lies, amazing women on what the F word means to them. By Scarlett Curtis. A collection of writing from extraordinary women, from Hollywood actresses to teenage activists, each telling the story of their personal relationship with feminism. This book explores what it means to be a woman from every point of view. Number 26. Sexual Politics. By Kate Millett. Sexual Politics is a 1970 book by Kate Millett, based on her PhD dissertation. It is regarded as a classic of feminism and one of radical feminism's key texts. Number 27. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. By Maya Angelou. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings is a 1969 autobiography describing the early years of American writer and poet Maya Angelou. The first in a seven-volume series, it is a coming-of-age story that illustrates how strength of character and a love of literature can help overcome racism and trauma. Number 28. Women and Power, A Manifesto. By Mary Beard. An updated edition of the Sunday Times bestseller Britain's best-known classicist Mary Beard, is also a committed and vocal feminist. With Rywit, she revisits the gender agenda and shows how history has treated powerful women. Number 29. Good and Mad, The Revolutionary Power of Women's Anger By Rebecca Traister Long before Pantsuit Nation, before the Women's March, and before the Hash Sign Me Too movement, women's anger was not only politically catalytic, but politically problematic. The story of female fury and its cultural significance demonstrates its crucial role in women's slow rise to political power in America.
as well as the ways that anger is received when it comes from women as opposed to when it comes from men. Number 30. Dear Jolly, or a Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions. By Kim Amanda Ngozi Adichie. Dear Jolly, or a Feminist Manifesto in 15 Suggestions is an epistolary form manifesto written by author Kim Amanda Ngozi Adichie. Deary Jolly was posted on her official Facebook page on October 12, 2016, was subsequently adapted into a book, and published in print on March 7, 2017. Number 31. Women Who Run With The Wolves, Myths and Stories of the Wild. By Clarissa Pinkolestes. Women Who Run With The Wolves, Myths and Stories of the Wild Woman Archetype is a book by June Jan Analyst, author and poet Clarissa Pinkolestes. PhD, published in 1992 by Ballantine Books. It spent 145 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list over a three-year span, a record at the time. Number 32. The Bloody Chamber. By Angela Carter. The Bloody Chamber is a collection of short fiction by English writer Angela Carter. It was first published in the United Kingdom in 1979 by Golanch and won the Cheltenham Festival Literary Prize. The stories share a theme of being closely based upon fairy tales or folk tales. Number 33. Women, Culture and Politics. By Angela Davis. A sequel of sorts to the author's masterful women, race and class, this book examines the critical issues important to women, racism, violence, health, children, education and peace. Number 34. This would be my undoing, living at the intersection of black, female, and feminist in white America. By Morgan Jerkins. From one of the fiercest critics writing today, Morgan Jerkins' highly anticipated collection of linked essays interweaves her incisive commentary on pop culture, feminism, black history, misogyny, and racism with her own experiences to confront the very real challenges of being a black woman today. Number 35. Redefining Realness, My Path to Womanhood, Identity, Love and So Much More. By Janet Mock. Redefining Realness, My Path to Womanhood, Identity, Love and So Much More is a memoir and the debut book by Janet Mock, an American writer and transgender activist. It was published on the 1st of February 2014 by Atria Books. The book has been praised by Melissa Harris Perry, Bell Hooks, Lavina Cox, and Barbara Smith. Number 36. My Life on the Road. By Gloria Steinem. My Life on the Road is the moving, funny, and profound story of Gloria Steinem's growth and the growth of a revolutionary movement for equality and of how surprising encounters on the road shape both. Number 37. Feminist Theory, From Margin to Center. By Bell Hooks. Feminist Theory, From Margin to Center is a 1984 book about feminist theory by Bell Hooks. The book confirmed her importance as a leader in radical feminist thought. Number 38. The Golden Notebook. By Doris Lessing. The Golden Notebook is a 1962 novel by Doris Lessing. It, like the two books that followed it, enters the realm of what Margaret Drabble in the Oxford Companion to English Literature called Lessing's Inner Space Fiction, her work that explores mental and societal breakdown. Number 39. The Women's Room. By Marilyn French. The Women's Room is the debut novel by American feminist author Marilyn French, published in 1977. It launched French as a major participant in the feminist movement and, while French states it is not autobiographical, the book reflects many autobiographical elements. Number 40. Women, Race and Class. By Angela Davis. A powerful study of the women's liberation movement in the US, from abolitionist days to the present. That demonstrates how it has always been hampered by the racist and classist biases of its leaders. From the widely revered and legendary political activist and scholar Angela Davis. Number 41. Backlash, The Undeclared War Against American. By Susan Faludi. Backlash, The Undeclared War Against American Women is a 1991 book by Susan Faludi. In which the author presents evidence demonstrating the existence of a media-driven backlash against the feminist advances of the 1970s. Number 42. Eloquent Rage, A Black Feminist Discovers Her. By Brittany Cooper. And Emma Watson Our Shared Shelf Selection for November-December 2018. Named the Best Book of 2018. Number 43. Fat is a Feminist Issue. By Susie Aback. Fat is a Feminist Issue. 
first published 20 years ago, shows how fact is not about food but rather about protection, sex, mothering, strength, assertion, anger, love. By understanding your investment in being fat, you can turn food into a friend. Number 44. Your Land. By Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Her Land is a utopian novel from 1915, written by feminist Charlotte Perkins Gilman. The book describes an isolated society composed entirely of women, who reproduce via pathogenesis. The result is an ideal social order, free of war, conflict, and domination. Number 45. Scum Manifesto. By Valerie Solanas. Scum Manifesto is a misandrist manifesto by Valerie Solanas, published in 1967. It argues that men have ruined the world, and that it is up to women to fix it. To achieve this goal, it suggests the formation of SCUM, an organization dedicated to overthrowing society and eliminating the male sex. Number 46. Colonize This. Young Women of Color on Today's Feminism. This landmark anthology offers gripping portraits of American life as seen through the eyes of young women of color. It has been decades since women of color first turned feminism upside down, exposing. Number 47. The Testaments. By Margaret Atwood. The Testaments is a 2019 novel by Margaret Atwood. It is a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale. The novel is set 15 years after the events of The Handmaid's Tale. It is narrated by Aunt Lydia, a character from the previous novel. Agnes, a young woman living in Jalid. And Daisy, a young woman living in Canada. Number 48. Fear of Flying. By Erica Long. Fear of Flying is a 1973 novel by Erica Young which became controversial for its portrayal of female sexuality and figured in the development of second wave feminism. Number 49. Against Our Will. By Susan Brown Miller. Against Our Will, Men, Women and Rape is a 1975 book about rape by Susan Brown Miller. In which the author argues that rape is a conscious process of intimidation by which all men keep all women in a state of fear. The book is widely credited with changing public outlooks and attitudes about rape. Number 50. Too Fat, Too Slutty, Too Loud, The Rise and Reign of the Unruly Woman. By Anne Helen Peterson. One of NPR's best books of 2017 Peterson's gloriously bumptious, brash ode to non-conforming women suits the needs of this dark moment. That was quite a list. We hope you found this list helpful. Good reading now. And don't forget to click on the like button. Bye now.